Praise the Lord, everybody. Aren't you excited about this Apostolic Assemblies of Christ? We're getting ready to launch with great anointed teaching. God is getting ready to move. I can feel the Shekinah glory in this place. Get ready to happen. Aren't you excited? I am so excited. Do me a favor. If you can like and share this anointed service that's getting ready to happen, I believe God has something for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. We welcome you to the Virtual Apostolic Assemblies of Christ Convention. Within this convention, we are praying that we will be a blessing to you and we certainly want you to be a blessing to our great organization. In doing so, there are gonna be four ways to give that will be presented on the screen. We certainly hope and pray that you will join in with us, clapping your hands, stumping your feet, but we want you to be a blessing and sow into this fertile ground within our organization in Jesus' name. Welcome to the Apostolic Assemblies of Christ virtual convention recorded from the M3 Center. 51 years ago, the Apostolic Assemblies of Christ was founded by my beloved father, the Honorable Bishop G.M. Boone on March the 20th 1970. I honor my presiding bishop, Bramlett Cooper, my assistant presiding bishop, Isaac Williams, and the entire Apostolic Assemblies of Christ family. I want you to share, tag, let someone know that the Apostolic Assemblies of Christ is on. Let us now Get ready for service. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I need you to do me a favor. Like, share, and tag somebody. And let them know that we're getting ready to have some church tonight, all right? Are you ready to have some church together? Come on, put those hands together. Storms are raging, he's my shelter, wherever he leads me, I will follow, cause I love Jesus, and he loves me, I love Jesus, I love Jesus, he's my savior, he's my savior, when storms are raging, when storms are raging, he's my shelter, he's my shelter, Whoa.
somebody and tell them that God, God is here. He's in the building. Whatever you need, God, 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 God is here. everybody praise the Lord to everybody we're so glad to be before you one more time so glad that you have joined us in our virtue hallelujah glory to God this is a time that you're going to be glad you have tuned in we're getting ready to go before the Lord amen and great things are planned for you doing this service would you bow your heads and pray in Jesus name our Father, hallelujah, in the, in the name of Jesus, mighty God, we praise you and we bless you, Lord. We lift up your great and holy name, God, for you are Lord of Lord, and you are the King of kings. Oh, God, we live and we move in you, Lord. We have our being in you, God. We are praising you, Lord, for what you are doing at this present time. We thank you, oh, God, that in these perilous times, oh, God, our minds are made up. We're going to stand firm and strong in the name of Jesus. We bless you, O oh God, for this place. We bless you, O oh God, for your people. We bless you, O oh God, hallelujah, because you're just worthy. You've given us your word, Lord. You've given us everything, Lord, that we need to make it through here in the name of Jesus. And, O oh God, as these services go forth, we pray for our leaders, Lord, our presiding bishop, dear God, his companion, Lord, the assistant, we pray for all of our bishops, Lord. We pray for all those across the land, Lord. In the name of Jesus, give them the boldness to stand. Help them to cry loud and spare not. In the name of Jesus. And, oh God, we're going to give you all the glory and the honor. It is yours in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Hallelujah. We're going to bring before you today, amen, hallelujah, you may be seated, those who are in the sanctuary with us. We're going to bring before you a panel, hallelujah, a panel of well-versed, anointed men. Our subject is still standing in perilous times. Our first speaker will be District Elder J.O. Rasul, pastor of the New Liberty Apostolic Faith Church in Detroit, Michigan. He will be speaking on still standing during pandemic times. Our next speaker will be Bishop Ernest Clay, pastor and founder of the Living Way Apostolic Faith Church in Towns Creek, Alabama. And he's the diocesan bishop of the Eastern District Council. He will be speaking on still standing as an AALC diehard. Presiding Bishop Bramit Cooper, pastor and founder of the New Beginning Apostolic Faith Church in Memphis, Tennessee. And he is our presiding bishop of the Apostolic Assemblies of Christ Incorporated. He will be speaking on still standing in a season of compromise. Hallelujah, I'm excited. These subjects, amen, are right where we live. So let's get ready to receive each of them in the order of which you have heard them. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord to you at home. We thank God for uh, this moment, and we certainly give God praise, amen, for each and every one. Protocol, amen, has been established, uh, and we thank God for everyone, amen. And so we'll get right into uh, the topic so we can get out of the way so that these great men of God can come uh, in their own way. I'm so glad they allowed me to go first uh, because there are some two heavy hitters uh, that are coming behind me, so I'll get out of the way, but I do want to share what the Lord has given me and get uh, what God has given me out so that we can uh, glean from what the Lord has uh, imparted. So we're topic, we're, our topic tonight, or today rather, is still standing during pandemic 
pandemic times. Now, uh, what we understand uh, is it's obvious that there are things that are happening that are outside of our control. Um, there are things that we see on the news. Uh, obviously, COVID is still among us. Uh, one of the things that we have to understand is that God is never caught off guard. He is always aware uh, of what is going on. And so it is that God allowed this to come about. And one of the things, if I could uh, certainly ask the family, if I were to take a poll, I would ask you, uh, what did you learn through this pandemic? I would ask you, what is it that God has, has shown you uh, through this pandemic? Uh, many of us have learned how to sew. And uh, some of us have learned how to play the piano. Uh, some of us have learned how to cook uh, because of this pandemic. But my question to you more specifically is, what did you learn about your God? Because the truth of the matter is, God allowed this pandemic not to teach you how to be top chef, uh, but God allowed this pandemic to teach you a little bit more about him. One of the things that I've learned about God is that through pestilence, through uh, plagues, uh, and, and through pandemics, God uses these strategically to show his people exactly who he is. Uh, and while fear is running rampant in our communities, in our country, the truth of the matter is, is that we don't fear because we know who holds tomorrow. We understand who is ultimately uh, in control. And if you flip through your Bible, you'll see this very constant theme throughout scripture that anytime there's a pandemic, God is revealing himself. And so it is that the Lord took me to uh, the, probably the most uh, famous pandemic uh, in the Bible, and that is uh, in the book of Exodus. You have a series uh, of pandemics that I want to share with you very quickly what the Lord has given, and again, get out of uh, your way. Exodus chapter number five, uh, the Bible lets us know that Pharaoh asks a very important question when confronted by Moses and Aaron. We understand something about God is that there is nobody on his level. God is God, nobody beside. He said if there was another God, I don't even know uh, who he is. Um, he's the only God. And, 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 and what we have to remember, we have to remember that our God is one. And he doesn't have... Uh, counterparts. He's one God. When you look into heaven, you see one, one God. And so Pharaoh asks a very important question. He asks, he said, well, uh, who is this Lord that I should listen to him? I read the scripture, Exodus chapter number five, we'll read verses one and two. The Bible says, and afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Pharaoh responds and says, who is this Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Notice before any plague was ever released, there was this question of who is the Lord. Before God began to send pestilence through the land, there was this question of who is the Lord. And, and what I've come to understand is that everything seemed fine to Pharaoh. Uh, everything, everything seemed to be okay to Pharaoh. He had what he wanted. He, he had the Israelites working for him. He had work and he had everything that he needed. And what I've come to understand is that, and, and, and this, won't be, this won't be popular, uh, but I, I've come to understand that God wants to always get us in a place where we learn more about him. And the problem is, brothers and sisters, is that we learn the most about God when things are not going right. Uh, you have to understand that God is attracted to trouble. And so that when we're in trouble, that's the time that we learn God the most. This is the time that we learn him to be a keeper. This is the time that we learn him to be a healer. Uh, you, you remember, and I'm sure that some of you have had this experience, where the lowest points of your life was the most revelatory points of your life, where God has revealed himself. Uh, I, I know myself, I've been in that place where it would seem as though everything was going wrong, but in that place where everything was going wrong, I had an encounter with God like never before. And this is because uh, God is attracted to trouble. He's close uh, to the broken hearted. So I want to encourage you, whoever's listening, that whatever you're going through right now, 
It's an effort for God to show more of himself to you. He wants to show you uh, something about him that, he, that you've never seen before, that you've never experienced from uh, your God. So be encouraged, my brother or sister. Uh, it's not bad luck. It's not because God is upset with you, but he wants to show you something that you had not seen uh, from him before. It was Paul who said that I might know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his sufferings. The problem with my generation is that we don't want to suffer. We don't want to go through nothing. And the problem is, is if we never go through anything, we will never learn anything about our God. So whoever you are, go through as a good soldier. And so it is that Pharaoh asked this ever important question. He says, well, who is uh, this God? Which is a fair question because you understand that the Egyptians, they were polytheistic in theology. They had many different gods. In fact, uh, there's one writing that said they had over 2,000 deities that they worshipped on a regular. But what you will find is that they had what was known as supreme deities. They had about 10 of them that were supreme. Gods that were over the sun and gods that were over the water and gods that were over uh, the livestock and the land. They had all of these gods that were determined to be supreme deity. So it's very important for us to understand how it is that God presented himself in this particular situation. Because when God sends his plagues, his plagues contradict every single supreme deity there was in Egypt. This is how God moves. He shows us that there can be nobody on the throne but himself. He shows us that there is only one God. So while you're worshiping the sun God, you have to understand that there is a God who created the sun. He, there is a God who created everything that we see and our God is a jealous God. So whatever idol we've put on uh, the throne, God will show you in very short time that he is the only God that there, there is. And so it is that, that God responds in Exodus chapter number seven and verse number five. He says, he says that I am the Lord. He says that they will know, the Egyptians will know that I am am the Lord when when I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them and so it is that he sends the 10 plagues to show them ultimately who he was he wanted to make sure that not only the Egyptians understood who he was but also the Israelites he wanted to make sure that they understood who he was and they were to realize his power after they were being released from their bondage and one of the reasons I believe that many of us have not been freed from some of the things that we have been dealing with is simply because we have yet to learn who God is uh, what I've come to understand is that before God set them free he had to show them who he was and some of us are going through issues and we're wondering God well when will I come out and we hear this message and that message saying I'm coming out I'm going forth it's my breakthrough and so on and so forth but you have to understand until you learn the lesson that God is trying to show you you're going to stay there until God is finished you've got to understand that the God that we serve is a God of knowledge and education he wants to educate you as to why it is that you're in the position that you're in on today so may I submit to you that before you start planning your coming out party look a little deeper and see if there's something that God is trying to reveal to you so you have substance when you come out of this storm and so it is brothers and sisters and I'm out of your way here in just a second but we have to understand that this pandemic was to reiterate to us who God is because the truth of the matter is that many of us have many different gods even in the church some of us have made our jobs our God and anytime they told us to come in early we come in early they tell us to stay late we stay late they tell us to neglect our family and we do so we've made our jobs our God and God is saying that I am still a jealous God and the truth of the matter is that some of us have made ourselves God we we do whatever we feel big and bad enough to do but God wants you to understand that you're too small to sit on his throne he is the only true and living God and the last thing that God revealed to me is that some of us have made ministry our gods some of us only study and pray simply to deliver a word some of us only fast simply so that we can be effective on Sunday but the Lord is saying that I am the reason for the ministry so don't study just to be effective in preaching but study to know more of who I am because if you are close to God everything else will fall into order 
God is saying, I am a jealous God. I don't want anything in front of me. Don't put yourself, don't put your job, don't put your children, don't put ministry, don't put preaching and teaching and singing before me because I am God. I'm the one you started with and I'm the one that you will finish with. And so it is, brothers and sisters, because uh, what we have to find, and I don't know why I'm still stuck here, what we have to find is that sometimes we think that we can manipulate and coerce God. Some of us, we sing these songs when blessings go up and, and, and when praises go up, blessings come down. We, we feel as though that we can pull on the arm of God anytime we need something. When healing is what we desire, we go and worship God. But may I submit to you that if God never does anything else for us, he's already done enough for us to praise him for the rest of our days. You can't coerce God. He knows your thoughts. And when you try to pull on him with ulterior motives, God will then ignore and shun us and so it is that the Bible shows us many things and this is what I'm closing with uh, about 10 minutes in uh, this is what I'm closing with Exodus chapter number 4 verses 29 through 31 shows us something here Bible lets us know that Moses and Aaron went and gathered uh, the elders of the children of Israel verse number 30 says and Aaron spake all the words which the Lord had spoken unto Moses and did the signs in the sight of the people Bible says in verse number 31 that the people believed and when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel and that he looked upon their affliction, the Bible lets us know that at that point they bowed their head and worshipped. In the middle of being displaced, they found some time to bow their heads and worship. In the middle of bondage, they found a place to bow their heads and, and worship. In the middle of attempted genocide, they found a place to bow their heads and worship. May I submit to you as I close that this pandemic was allowed by God to get you to a place where you are closer with him. You have to understand, brothers and sisters, that we've been going through the motion, some of us for many years, where we go to church and the only worship that we see is on Sunday when the organ is playing. But the Lord said, I have to bring you back to the heart of worship where your worship starts when your feet hit the floor. It was David who said early well I seek thee your worship brothers and sisters is not just confined to the building that you go to Sunday after Sunday but I heard the older saints say that worship is a lifestyle that every day that you wake up you should be worshiping your God but God allowed the pandemic to get you back to the place of intimacy the Lord allowed me to see and I began to ask him God why did you allow this to happen and, and damage so many people and he told me, he said, my people have never prayed the way that they pray now. Because of this pandemic, I allowed. So I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters. Whatever God has shown you in this pandemic, you have to understand that God is still God on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. That he is God and he deserves work. I heard, I heard the writer say that I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I want you to be encouraged that we are in a pandemic, but we are still standing. We know what worship is, and it's, it doesn't stop when the organ stops. It doesn't stop when the drums stop. But in fact, brothers and sisters, effective worship can be seen when nobody's pushing you. When there's nobody saying amen, and it's just you and your God. I encourage you, if you had not gotten to the place, if you had not gotten to the place where you have intimate time with God, one-on-one -on -one time, with him, I encourage you to find that prayer closet and get before the Lord. God bless you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord to everyone. God bless you. Amen. In the precious, mighty name of Jesus, we are so happy to be here at this time and in this place. Amen. Because God is good. Amen. I'm enjoying myself. Amen. I am enjoying myself. Amen. And I thank God. Amen. For the topic. Amen. Standing as an AA of C of Christ. 
Oh, my goodness. Amen. Uh, die hard at that. Uh, die hard. Amen. Apostolic Assembly of Christ. Amen. I thank God. Amen. For, amen, this topic. Amen. If you don't stand for truth and stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Uh, I tell you this, amen, I've learned, amen, I, uh, I, I've learned over the years, amen, that it, it, it really it takes, amen, your whole heart, amen, your whole heart has to be, amen, given to God, amen, in order, amen, for him, amen, to just fine tune you, amen, the way that he wants to, amen, and to make you to be that person, amen, that you can endure, I found in this subject here, this topic here, this topic here, amen, I, 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 when, I came, when I came into truth, when I came into truth, I knew, amen, that this was truth, amen, and I sold out, I sold out everything. I, 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 I came up in, amen, in the Methodist church. I, I came up, amen, in the church of God in Christ, amen, where, amen, that we learn how to be sanctified, Bless my God. And I tell you from there, amen, I came over, amen, onto this side. They told us, amen, when we left Alabama, went to Indianapolis, Indiana, amen. Whatever you do, do not get, amen, tangled up with those Jesus-only people. Never heard of a Jesus-only, but I can say I am a Jesus-only, and I'm so glad. I thank God, amen. I, I, I looked at this, I looked at this topic, amen, and I believe that in that God knows our heart. I am here for the duration. I'm here for the duration. I'm here for the duration. Amen. I said I'm here for the duration. I'm not here for brownie points. I'm not here because I'm looking, amen, for something. I found out, amen, down through the years, amen, people that are looking for something, amen, they are not settled. I read in my Bible, amen, whereas we will read in just a moment, amen, those, amen, that had an agenda, amen, that you didn't know, but they had an agenda, amen, they didn't last very long, amen, and if you are truth and you know the truth, amen, you might go, you might not say anything, amen, but you know when people are playing. Somebody say amen. Our scripture, amen, for today is, amen, 2 Thessalonians, amen, uh, chapter 2, amen, uh, and verse number 15. It says, therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught, where by word, whether by word or by epistle. If you have been uh, given a word, amen, Paul is talking to the church of Thessalonica. And this church, amen, love God. They love Paul. They love the truth. Amen. Paul said even from the beginning, from the beginning of the ministry of this ministry, when Paul went on one of his uh, missionary journeys, amen, you'll find it in the 17th chapter of the book, amen, of Acts. Matter of fact, all of the, uh, uh, the uh, oh my God, amen, of these here epistles, amen, glory to God, you can find these churches, amen, in the book of Acts. And that, that's why I, that, that's when I think really found the truth. Amen. You're going to have to get in your word. Amen. Uh, people don't know that these churches, amen, was established, amen, in the book of Acts. And this is the book, amen, of history. And I look at this, amen, and Paul, amen, is knowing, amen, that he is about to pass off of the scene, amen, and he is looking for dedicated men, amen, and he had those, amen, that loved him, amen, that helped him, amen, in the ministry, and they helped him, amen, until the last. He had those that he could depend on, and now, amen, the church at Thessalonica, now he is writing and encouraging them in a uh, in a thanksgiving of prayer and an appeal to them, amen, that they may, amen, glory to God, uh, keep, keep going on. He said, therefore, brethren, stand fast. That is a military word, stand fast, amen. Uh, uh, stand in rank, amen. Stay in, 
they stay in place. Amen. Keep rank. Amen. Don't break rank. Amen. We that are military men, we know what that means. Amen. You have to, your step has to be in step. Amen. With the one that is giving the caters. Glory to God, amen. And Paul, amen, but you know, you're going to have to really love truth. you got to love God first, amen. And I'm going to cover this, amen, how I became a diehard, amen, of the AAAC. Amen. First, you got to be a, a diehard, amen, of the truth. <laughs> Glory to God. Did I say truth? you got to love truth first, amen. And, and after you love truth, then you can, because you're going to have to be under somebody, and you have to be, you have to know, amen, Glory to God. God, that men that have been called by God, amen, that has been established by God, amen, you got to have some trust in them. Amen. Oh, you're going to have to have some, you have to put some trust in somebody, amen, glory to God. And I found this body of people here, amen, from the founder all the way down, what well, is a body of people, amen, that are clean people. Clean, clean people, amen. People that have have, have stayed the course, and, and people, amen, that 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 don't mind, amen, uh, uh, legislating, amen. Glory to God that amen, and laid it out the way that it's supposed to be. Glory to God, amen. And I have found out down through the years, amen. Those that have got caught up into whatever situation that it has been, they 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 went a wall. They had another agenda. You didn't know they had another agenda. But after things, amen, unfold the way they did, you saw that they had another agenda. Glory to God. It was, amen, in, in the epistle of John. John said this, amen. John said this, amen. Amen. They went out from us. They went out from us because they were not all of us. Amen. Amen. He said, if they had been of us, no doubt they would have yet remained. Amen. Oh, somebody, come on. Glory to God. Amen. And all of the ones, amen, that have left out of the AAFC, they didn't leave out because of sin. They didn't leave out because, amen, it was another doctrine. I want to make that straight. Amen. I want to make that clear. Amen. But there are those, amen, that had an agenda. Amen. You might not know that they had an agenda, but they had an agenda. And these people here, these people here, they love Paul. They love truth. They love Paul. They love truth. And I looked up the word die hard. I looked up this word die hard and it says strongly or fanatically determined or devoted. Especially resisting change. That's me. <laughs> Amen. I found this to be what it is. It's truth. No change. Holiness is right. I say holiness is right. Water baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ is right. Not, nothing else. Nothing else. No in-between ground. Nothing else. It's right. Amen. And, and, and they, those diehards, amen, they, it's hard. They don't die real soon. They don't die real soon. They look at us, amen, and they looked at us, amen, as being, you see, I have a hump in my back. They call us, amen, those old dinosaurs. I've been around a long time till they got a hump in the back. Oh, do you get it? Do you get to breathe? A synonym. For die hard is words like old school, old fashioned, traditional, unprogressive, unprogressive. Oh, bless my God. Number two, I like this one here. Very determined or loyal, especially very loyal to a set of beliefs and not withstanding to change those beliefs. In Proverbs, in Proverbs, in Proverbs, bless you, Jesus, in Proverbs, I believe it's 20, 20, 22, amen, in verse number, number 28, it says this. Bear with me. I am old school. 
I don't, I don't have the new stuff, amen. I don't have the new stuff, amen. I just let it roll off, amen. Praise the Lord. 22 and verse number 8, it says this here. Bless the Lord. Lord God, I thank you. Remove not. Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers has set. Back in the older days, in the days of biblical days, those that wanted their brethren property by, by some kind of chicanery, they would go, amen, and intentionally let the, the land kind of grow up, amen, so that the landmark, a stone had been put at the corner of their property that joins to somebody else's property. In God, it was a law. It was a law that their brethren could not take their brothers. No, they couldn't land. And they would do such a thing, amen. They would move. They would just little bit by little bit. They will move the landmark and, 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 get, and, and your land is just kind of getting a little smaller, but there's getting wider and wider. That, that is why, that's why it's so important that Paul was telling them not to move, but to stand fast. I will move on from there. He said in verse number, number, verse number, number, number 15, number 16, Paul was telling them, he was letting them to know. That he was praying a prayer for their steadfastness. And not only their steadfastness, but their faithful duty toward God. And holding on to truth. And in this, amen, he went on to tell them, amen, how that they should, amen, carry themselves after Receiving this truth. And, and, and what had happened, there were those that hated Paul so bad, they would, they would, they would, they would uh, get part of a, a letter and they were forge Paul's, the apostles' name to it. And they would say amen and send it to this church uh, and that church and say, this is what Paul said. We have to be careful, amen, about what we say. Amen. Amen. We have to say what we mean and mean what we say. Because the, the, the counterfeiter, amen, what he does, amen, he does it well. No praise to him. But what happens, amen, is that he, amen, will take your word and change it in a way that it looks like. Amen. That is just what you said and you've changed. And Paul was letting them to know on this particular subject, amen, that the resurrection, the rapture had already passed. And he was letting them to know and assuring them that it had not passed. He said, if you get a word, if, if somebody stand up in the audience and give a word, or if it come by letter, as from one of us, he say, do not listen to it. Amen. Because he said, first of all, amen, he say, look here, it has not transpired yet. He said, for the rapture has not taken place. He said, first of all, amen, verse number one, he said, I beseech you, brethren, brethren, uh, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together with him. He's letting them to know, no, 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 no. I have not wrote such a word. I have not dictated such a word or a letter. Amen. He said, but I want you to know this one thing, that this cannot happen until, first of all, amen, that that man of sin be revealed. He said, first of all, it's going to be a great falling away. Is that what he said? He says it's going to be a great falling away first. And then that man of sin will be revealed. And he said in verse number 8 of verse number 7, he said, Only he who let will let 
until he is taken out of the way. The restrainer, amen, is restraining and keeping back, amen. The Holy Ghost in the church is, is restraining, amen. Glory to God, amen. The, the, the devil would love to overthrow our faith. But the Holy Ghost is down on the inside of us. It's restraining him. Hey, we would have been up and out of here. Glory to God if God had of so desired. But it's not the time yet. And Paul was just consoling them and letting them to know, amen, that this hadn't taken place yet. You can. Paul, Paul not Paul. Let, let me say this. It was, it, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was Jude. Jude, amen, in the second verse. He said, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you, he said, it was needful that I write unto you, that you, amen, contend for the faith. Oh, that's, that sounds like don't change. Uh, that, that, doesn't that sound? He said, Cont contend means to put up a fight. You got to be fanatic about it. You got to go crazy about it. He said, look at here. He said, you contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Don't give it up. Don't go back. Hold on to it. Don't move the landmark. God is dependent on us. And I tell you this. The people in your church, we pastors, people, they are dependent on us. To teach them the truth. That we can show them truth in the word of God. And I want you to know something. If it's not the word of God, amen, glory to God, it's not authentic. Paul said, amen, by tradition or by letter or by a word. Let me say this right here because I know it's just about time for me to close. But it is very important to convey truth unto the people. This is why Paul says stand fast. Because your standing fast, amen, is determining on the hinge of that door of people that are looking at you. And if screws come out of that hinge, and you are found out to be some otherwise, the faith of many can be overthrown. But you got to be a die hard. You got to be a die hard. You, especially during times like this, you better be a die hard, amen, because it's too much stuff going on. It's easy right now. It's easy right now to, 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 to look and find the counterfeit. Maybe, maybe, not, maybe not to you, but I can spot a counterfeit after two or three words, Bishop. After two or three words, just in remarks. Just in remarks, amen, two or three words. I can find out what you believe. I believe that we as the people of God would commit ourselves to him as being just that one, amen, that God of that truth that has been declared from the beginning. They stood steadfastly. Acts 2 and 42 say they stood steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and breaking of bread and going from house to house. They did not go to no other doctrine. They stayed right there. And people of God, saints of God, let me say this to you. It's nothing else. <laughs> this is the pillar and ground of the truth. This is it. And this is what Paul was saying, amen, even to Timothy. 3 and 16, 1 Timothy. He said, look at here. You are, you, are, you, are, you are upon, you have been, you have been. You have been established upon the pillar, the ground of the truth. That is, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. For God was manifested in the flesh. He was. Seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, 
And he was received up in glory. Come on, give God a hand praise because he's that good. Amen. He is good, 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 good. To our previous speakers, District Elder J.O. Rasul and Bishop Ernest Clay, uh, certainly a beautiful word delivered by both of them, and we do honor God for these great men of God who have shared with us from their hearts on tonight or today. And we certainly want to uh, take an opportunity to take that one step further. I believe that this will complete, uh, if you will, the trivector of these three uh, topics or subject matters, and I think they've covered the word very, very well. So we certainly want to give them another round of applause uh, for what they've already shared with us in the gospel. It's okay with you. Also, you can give a virtual round of applause as well while you are out there. Certainly want to make sure you stay a part of what we are doing here in this forum. Uh, we're talking to you a little bit today about still standing in a season of compromise, still standing in a season of compromise. Now, I am going to give you just a little bit of a warning on this particular particular subject matter is that uh, we're going to take the gloves off a little bit on this subject if you're all the same with that amen because uh, if you're not familiar with taking the gloves off you remember how they had boxing with those nice soft gloves that they punched each other but then there was MMA style came along and uh, they certainly took the gloves off and it's not a cute sport, uh, amen. But nevertheless, tonight, uh, this afternoon, I should say, we want to make sure we cover a couple of things with you that's happening within this season. Uh, the book of Acts chapter number one and verse seven, it speaks to, and he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the season which the Father has put in his own power. But he goes on to say, but ye shall receive power after that, the Holy Ghost has come. We are clearly apostolic assemblies of Christ and the body of Christ. We're in a season of compromise toward our founding principles of holiness. Uh, and with that in mind, it's very important that we turn this thing around and make sure we stay grounded in the truth uh, of our salvation. And that's very important. I'm going to cover today's session uh, fairly briefly, I believe. It's going to be in three sections. I'm going to first talk to you about holding fast. The second thing I'm going to talk about is only the strong can survive. And the third point is compromise nullifies our covenant with God. So this is a proverbial, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you, and then I'll tell you what I told you. That's what we'll do over the next few moments. We have just a few more moments here. Within all of those things, now, <clears throat> during the season of compromise, this is not the first time this has happened either, Bishop Williams. I remember back during the Apostolic Council, I think that's roughly Acts chapter number 15, uh, there was a compromise trying to raise its head. You remember when all uh, the apostles came together and they had to talk about those things that they had common. But the beautiful part of that council is they left there in one accord. They left there on a single page. Uh, they were able to go and do and preach the gospel in accordance with what Jesus had birthed into them. I believe Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15 and around verse 58, it talked about, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. He says, be unmovable and always abound in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know your labor is not in vain in the Lord. It's important to understand that when we are steadfast, when we stay up on our spiritual perch, we don't have to get despondent or feel like we are missing something if the world starts to drift away and we find ourselves essentially on an island of holiness but still proclaiming the name of Jesus. Uh, I'm saying that more or less as a, a matter of speaking so you can see exactly what we're saying, but very important that we don't go too far uh, trying to please or accommodate or appease is the word I'm looking for. Uh, those who do not uh, maintain our gospel or doctrinal pre preaching and teaching. The book of Hebrews chapter number 10, as I begin to deal with this part about holding fast, it says, uh, 1023, I believe it is, let us hold fast the profession of our faith 
and it closes with without wavering. And that's the part that I think is so important to emphasize without wavering. We cannot waver in this profession. Holiness is a profession. In other words, it is who we are. It's what we do. It is our day-to-day -day thing. If we only are holy on Sunday and on Bible study, then something is a little bit wrong in our spiritual walk with God. We have to continue to be holy day in, day out, and we must continue to do just that. The apostolic standards that we talk about, we teach about, we pray about, uh, those are just a natural part of our life, our everyday life. I was thinking the other day about King Solomon. You all know King Solomon is most known for his wisdom and how wise he was. But I remember there was a part when Solomon, had all of his success of building uh, if you will, the building in the house of God and the tabernacle. Y'all remember all of those things that he did? And when he brought the temple, I should say, when he built that, uh, something happened uh, that got him off the beaten path. He began to have all of these guests come in that were of the Gentile nations. And within that, even the queen of, I think it was Sheba and so forth, and when they began to come, uh, Solomon somewhere began to get caught up in some of the idolatry and some of the other things that they were putting down. And as you well know, Solomon had a whole lot of wives of other descents. And it's interesting to understand uh, that's really the epitome of compromise. God had blessed him with exactly what he asked him for, which was for wisdom, that I may judge your people, that I may continue to be before your people. Uh, but God gave him that wisdom. And with that same wisdom, Solomon began to fail because he began to compromise. That's how large of an issue this is. I think the other thing that I've talked about, if you will, the whole thing about holding fast, and that's important in this time and in this space. The second point I wanted to make with you quickly is only the strong can and will survive. Uh, scripture came to my mind in Deuteronomy chapter number 31. It says, be strong and of a good courage and fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he is that, or he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. This was basically Moses' instruction to Joshua. In other words, as I have been with Moses, I will also be with thee. Uh, so there was no compromise on Moses' part. And what Moses is instilling in Joshua is there cannot be any compromise on your part. You must continue to trust God and continue to look unto him. He will bring you out out of all of these things. And so understanding that the second part of that verse, verse 7 says, And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of a good courage. Today, we must be strong and of a good courage. If we're going to stay out of this season of compromise, if we're not going to buckle, uh, we have to stay strong and of a good courage because there are some who want us to le le loosen, that's the word I'm looking for, loosen uh, what it is, our apostolic principles and our doctrine and our practices. But I got to make sure you understand it's very important that we hold fast those things that God has purpose and mandated of us. Now we get to the part where we take the gloves off just to pinch. Now, you know, birds of a feather, they flock together. Y'all know how that work, right? And so you can't lose your identity, uh, if you will, because eagles just don't quack like ducks. Uh, which is to say, when you stay, if eagles fly with ducks and walk with ducks and cluck like ducks, they lose their identity as eagles. Uh, everybody know eagles soar high above all of the other riffraff. And we have some eagles in the room. Amen. Somebody need to take text that out there or type that out there and just say, look, say, I'm an eagle. Uh, and you need to go ahead and just type that in and encourage somebody. Maybe share and tag somebody and let them know that we're eagles. We're, we're, uh, and they say birds of a feather flock together. And we want to be among eagles. Uh, we want to continue to fly high. And that's a very important part of us. I think sometimes, especially this happens with some of our younger ministers, if you will, or saints, uh, can tend to get mixed up with the wrong groups. 
Okay, uh, yeah, the, you, we can get mixed up with the wrong groups, and when we start mixing with the wrong groups, uh, at times it can make us lose who we are, and we must make sure we stay true to who we are. Uh, the third point that we're going to make as we get ready to turn the corner here, and that is compromise, nullify our covenant with God. And we came from James chapter 2. Is what we were thinking on that verse around verse 10 or so. It says, for whosoever shall keep the whole law uh, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Uh, that basically say if we err in one part of our walk with God, uh, then we're guilty of everything. Uh, it reminded me of the young man who would ask Jesus, you know, uh, all of those things. The question that came up about what he could do to inherit eternal life. And uh, I think he told him, I've done all of those things. I've kept the law. I'm good to my parents and yada, yada, yada. But uh, Jesus told him, one thing thou lackest. And one, that one thing that Jesus identified obviously caused him to lose, uh, <laughs> lose his, his passion, if you will, to serve Jesus and to follow him at that time. So these things become very, very important as we follow God. Now, so understand this. When you lose anything from everything, you have nothing. Okay, I'll repeat it. I'm glad you asked. So when you lose anything from everything, you end up with nothing, which is to say God has given us everything in his word and in the promises that he has made us. When we begin to lose things from that, to compromise, to fall short, to sell out, then all that we have left becomes nothing. That's what ends up happening. So we're in that season of it doesn't take all of that to be saved. And we know that God is still, he has not changed his mind. He do still have requirements of us that we should stand fast, especially in these times in which we live. I'll close by giving you some advice that I've given to young men and women, uh, those who I talk to, those we minister for, even those who are part of our own ministry, is that this advice is important, uh, especially when you're trying to get out of the gate and ministering. One thing is, it's very important to distinguish yourself in the rich word of God versus the style points. Uh, because sometimes the style points is things that people really, really jump into. But you got to understand it's the word that breaks the yoke. The word is where, uh, if you will, the, where the anointing is. And that will help separate us uh, from anything and anyone else. Ministers clearly are servants first and then afterwards <laughs> the, everything else. We serve God's people. We serve the house of God. We serve the organization. We serve our pastors, our leaders. That's what we do. We serve first. And service is very much needed in this hour, in this time. Now, I told y'all early on that we were taking the gloves off just a little bit. I know this is not the normal, uh, you know, uh, hellfire and brimstone type message, but at least it's things that we need to understand and appreciate about our doctrine, especially when it comes down to compromise. The final point I'll share with you, and that is that spiritual character, it does matter. Uh, our spiritual character, how we walk, it does matter. It, it, there is a conflict when somebody say that they are an apostolic born-again believer, but their life and lifestyle don't speak to that. Uh, it, it, it's something about, even on our job, if you were to go and interview people who you work with and they find out that, they are, oh, you can't be talking about him, uh-uh. And if we just to say sometimes what we say perhaps in the pulpit or among the church and in our testimonies, it don't add up with our life. And that's the greatest platform that we have to preach from is who we are. We have to make sure we speak to that. That's what compromise is all about, is saying one thing and doing something different. Uh, in this season, in this time, Apostolic Assemblies of Christ, I encourage every pastor, every leader, every teacher, whatever the position that you hold, that we continue to stay steadfast. Even within the season of being pushed uh, relative to changes, people want us to change the platform. Form. People want us to be inclusive of different types of ministry, different lifestyles, and all of those things. But we must stand fast and stay planted on the true salvation because at the end of the day, God is looking for a church that's without blemish, 
or a spot or any such thing. That's how we make it in these seasons of compromise. We stay committed to the kingdom of God, and that's how we make it in these perilous times. That's how we stand. At this time, will you please receive back, amen, I will moderate it with a hearty praise the Lord. <laughs> That word stirred me up, y'all. I'm, hey, hey, I said it stirred me up inside. Hallelujah. I thank God for what we have heard this day. God has been good to us, and truly, I know your soul says yes. I believe your soul is shouting yes. We praise God, hallelujah, for we are more determined even today than ever before that we're going to stand fast. We're going to stand strong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wish I was in the right place today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's right. Clap your hands a little bit. Hallelujah. Still standing. Not going to let anything cause us to fall because God didn't call us to fall. He didn't give us a spirit that would lay down and be walked over or compromised. Amen. Amen. So we thank the Lord again for these wonderful speakers. Clap your hands for them one more time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we could just take, amen, and, and, and just soak up these words that we've heard today. Amen. We can go a little farther and do it with much, much joy and with much zeal. Amen. Amen. So now it is time for you out there. To sow a seed into some very good ground. Hallelujah. I said sow a seed. And we all know that when you plant a seed, you expect it to come up. You expect it to multiply, to, to produce some fruits. Amen. Well, it's a good time to sow into good ground because you have heard the truth. Nothing but the truth. Amen. And you have heard it from qualified, anointed, and called men of God. So now, if you would just watch the bottom of your screen, and you will see how you can sow into good ground for this wonderful organization. This organization is sailing on. We are going forth in the name of Jesus. But you know, money is the answer to all things. So we do need you to sow. We need you to write a check or do your cash apping. You can do whatever form of giving that is available to you, and we will appreciate it. And I tell you what, it's going to rebound back to you. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the principle with God. What you send out will come back to you. Amen. Amen. So we're looking forward to you helping this organization to grow. We need your financial support, so please do that in whatever way that you find suitable for you. God bless you, and thank you for that. Now, we're getting ready to have our announcements. We want you to remember now, amen, to tune in at 7 p.m. Eastern District, Eastern Standard Time, amen, for a powerful and uplifting service. You ain't going to want to miss it now. Our assistant presiding bishop, Bishop Isaac Williams, will be bringing the word of God, and he is full of fire and anointing, so you don't want to miss that, all right? We want you to plan to start even a watch party. Tell somebody, share and let someone know it's time for them to be blessed by tuning in to the Apostolic Assemblies of Christ. So we're going to lift up the name of Jesus, and we're going to be blessed, amen, as we go forward to the other parts of our service. And we just invite you to maintain, stay tuned, and keep on praying for us in Jesus' name. God bless every one of you.